know this is a Pentecostal church, amen? This is not the church you sit down and be quiet. I hold that church to be sincere, to be clapped, and to move, amen? My son and first lady, we believe in the arts. We believe in moving and dancing, all right? We want to be sure that you're going to stay behind the choir. Clap your hands, move your feet. Let's make a joke and join to the Lord. Come on, receive our choir by saying, sing choir. Sing choir.
time, we're going to uh, have a presentation uh, on this special day, and we're going to call on the, uh, the Pastor A Committee. Amen. Uh, at this time, if they'll come down, they got a, a special offering, a special gift, rather, uh, at this time. So, Sister Lewis is there. The hospitality committee, and then I said to Pastor A, they are wearing so many hats here, but all right, all right, the hospitality committee, and then Sister Dean and Sister Lewis, let's receive them this time. Mother's Day 
from the King Shepherd Center family. We had at this time Mother Greg, which is one of the groups, to present you with this and uh, token of our love from the King Shepherd Center family.
my mother, and I thank the Lord that uh, uh, 24 years ago today, uh, there you go, Juan, there he is. 24 years ago today, amen, hey, today is his birthday. Thank the Lord again for I thank the Lord for her and for how she's been a great mother. She's been a friend. I've seen her sacrifice throughout the years. We have 29 years of marriage. Amen. I can tell you, young people, you can make it. Amen. Amen. It's been the goal of her and myself to model it for our children. And yes, all they are to know is church. Amen. They don't need to know the world. Amen. And I thank and praise the Lord because of her spirit, because of her sincerity, uh, because of her temperament. She has an ear and a heart toward God. So we're not going to uh, make any more uh, amends. I want you all stand at your feet at this time. Amen. I know everybody's ready for word. I want you to get behind our first lady this afternoon. And, and so I want you to receive her by putting your hands together as she brings a dynamic word to us. Hallelujah. Those who do not know her, we do not know her. 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 She's a tremendous woman of God. And then this lady, she is a first class mother. I don't know that I've seen a better mother. She's a first grade mother. I look up to her as an example of how to be a good mother. She's one of the best women and mothers that I know. So I praise the Lord for her, her family, and yes, and for her being out today with us. Um, I thank the Lord also for my mother. Even though I said the first class, I think I have the number one mother for the very long day. And I have uh, had some beautiful flowers that I had when I picked out every flower, cut every flower, designed every flower, went on YouTube, learned how to make a flower arrangement, put it together. I spent a clip on that, and then of course running late, I forgot it on the table. So. <laughs> But um, the flowers express my love. I love flowers, and that, that expresses my love for her. Uh, she has truly been a flower in my life, and I praise the Lord for, for her. I thank the Lord. I kind of get tickled. I think the Lord is trying to, somebody trying to tell me something. I was trying to put together the sermon. I think I did this last year, and right when I hit print, print, I was running late. It said, out of ink. And I was like, out of ink. I did that last last year. Y'all know I like to read my notes. And so it said, out of ink. And I said, I hear you, Lord. Because last year did the same thing. I said, I hear you. So I just left the notes there. And in the car, I took like three memo pages, which for me is nothing of notes. And I said, Lord, I'm just going to deliver the word. So is that all right? Yeah. You just pray for me, man. Amen. 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 I thank God also for being a mother. I thank the Lord uh, for my two children who are here today. If you go ahead and stand and stand, Julia. And little Juan for the back. Captain says, little Juan, he made me a mother. Amen. That's why I have this wonderful name today. It's a little Juan. Juan Jr. Juan Antonio. 
junior. <laughs> Amen. I look at my children, I think back, uh, I'm proud to be a mother. Have I been a perfect mother? No. Are there things that I wish I could do differently? Yes. Do I let those hold me back? No. And I, but I am the mother that I am uh, because of the gifts and, and the talents that the Lord has given me. I'm thankful for that opportunity to be the mother. I thank the Lord for my children. They're both different than one. I remember him. Uh, he was a, he came out, he was kind of a grumpy little baby. He always like this. And he was short and uh, he was real light. And I used to call him Guido because he looked like he belonged in the mafia hitman. And I always see a little scene on him. I could just see him with a little gun. And he would always talk like this. Even when he sang, he had a song that said, Lift up holy hands. We had him on the table. I will be so holy. In the presence. I said, Say it again, why? No. That was my baby. And uh, then Julia was just the opposite. She was a little bit sunshine. She came out always smiling. She had a voice like Minnie Mouse. And she always talked really high. If y'all remember Julia, she had a high voice. And she looked like Minnie Mouse because the only hairstyle I could do was part it in the middle and put your boots. <laughs> Somebody was praying for me that she could just grow up old enough to do her own hair. But uh, just two precious children. Two precious children. And God has blessed me. I'm so thankful for them today. Let's give the Lord a hand for all Today I want to take my text from one verse of scripture. It's Esther chapter 4 verse 16. Esther chapter 4 verse 16. And if you would allow me, I'm going to read from another version. And follow along in your version. I'll read from the NIV version. In the Bible. Esther chapter 4, verse 16. Can you have that say amen? Amen. Everyone can have it. The honor and glory of God. Esther chapter 4, verse 16. And it reads accordingly, Go, gather together all the Jews who are in Susa and fast for me. Do not eat or drink for three days, night or day. I and my attendants will fast as you do. When this is done, I will go to the king. Even though it is against the law. And if I perish, I perish. Please bow your head. Dear Father God, we honor you today. We love you so much. We thank you. We honor you as King of Kings and Lord of Lords. We ask today that you allow the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of understanding, the spirit of revelation, the spirit of might and counsel, the spirit of the knowledge of the things of you, directed by every word in the remainder of this service. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. As I was thinking about Mother's Day, I began to think about children and knowledge. Knowledge. And as I was talking about my children, how I brought them up in knowledge of the Lord. And knowledge is very important. Um, one thing that I know I did right was I would always, I had pictures and videos when they were little, teaching them the books of the Bible. I had a little wand, it was two in the bathtub going, <laughs> Julia, Wani taught the scriptures, taught the word of God, and tried to brought them out to church and put them in an environment where information, where the knowledge of God was being taught. Knowledge is important because knowledge isn't just good information. When people fail to, to understand 
is that knowledge is a spiritual essence. Yeah. Knowledge leaves a mark. Mm -hmm. Knowledge experience uh, makes, I think, an impression. I just think of it as kind of like an indent. If you would press something and it would stay down. Knowledge experience. Somebody says, I don't, I won't know it unless I experience. Be careful what you you experience because knowledge makes makes an impression. In the beginning, in Adam and Eve, you talked about the tree of good and evil. And the Lord said for them to eat of any other tree but the tree of good and evil. Because the knowledge of good and evil is in me. Because there's some knowledge you were never meant to have. And I said, well, I have to experience it. some knowledge you were never meant to have. If you were born up in the church, there was some knowledge you were never meant to have. You was never meant to to know what it meant to wake up drunk, yes, sloppy drunk. Yes, he was never meant to know what it meant to, to smoke a reefer. Yes, he was yes. never meant to know that. Right. He was never meant to know um, what it meant to have premarital sex. Right. You were never meant to have that knowledge, yes. the knowledge of evil, because it makes an impression. It makes an, a mark. <laughs> Sometimes people have affairs and they, it's in their, in their marriage and then they decide to, to work it out and there's, there's nothing wrong with that. But it would be naive to say that it doesn't make a difference. The knowledge of someone else doesn't, it does make a difference. And those are things we have to overcome and can overcome. But knowledge makes, makes a difference today. And as I began to think about knowledge, the world, just as mothers of teachers, the world today is a teacher. And the world has a lot of knowledge and, and things that it's trying to communicate uh, to our young people, uh, especially about God holds the family up high, so there's a lot of knowledge about relationships, where God intended the relationship to be between one man and one woman, and they would enter into a sexual relationship to have a family that would last forever. Now we hear all sorts of definitions of relationships, whether they be a man with a woman before uh, marriage coming together sexually, we call that fornication. Whether it would be with a man with a man, or a woman with a woman, the devil said mix it all up, a man and a woman, or whatever. And we had a bishop at one of our pastors' conference, and he was talking about now we're in the age of the bisexual, and he said, I don't know who's older. He said, I don't know what that means, but I guess it means that you'll have sex with anything that walks by. <laughs> it seems comical, but this is the day that we live in. And the word is, when you go away to college, you can do anything you want. You can experience any knowledge that you want. It won't make a difference. You, everybody says you've been there, but you better be careful because some knowledge you were never meant to have. Some experiences can convert the knowledge of you and change your course of destiny forever. So as we talk today, the world also is a teacher and we have to, it has its knowledge uh, and it, because it's trying, it's not just trying to expose the knowledge, it wants to make something, take away from your wholeness, your innocence, and make a mark on you. As a mother, I love to tell stories, and thus we're in Esther here today, love to teach. I see my sister here, I wasn't sure she was gonna be here, Roxanne. And when she was little, I don't know if she remembered, I would, be, I would tell her stories. I would read to her at night about the Bible, or then I would tell her the Grimm's, Fables, Aesop's, and she remember that. I would tell her those stories all the time, and I guess I haven't changed. I've just changed to something more correct, the Bible. But as I was reading the book of Esther and studying um, for the text, and by the way, I want to thank the ladies that have been here, the, the dancers, they did a lovely job. I asked them to day what maybe a week ago. I said, I'm going to be speaking on Take Me to the King. I'd love you to put together a dance for that. And then they do a lovely job. Yeah. 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 So I was studying the book of Esther. And as we have the, 
the story of Esther goes that there was a king at the time called King Xerxes. If you look at that X C R X yes, and at that time he was very rich and he was showing off he had this big party, he was showing off all of his riches to uh, the region of great men. And one of the things he wanted to show us he had the most beautiful wife, and he was Vashti. And they were having a party, uh, so they were drunk. And he's like, bring Vashti, bring her all down. He wanted to parade around like a little pony in <laughs> front of the men. And look what I got. And she said, no, not today, not in your condition. And he was embarrassed. And the men said, if you don't get your wife in control, all the women are going to stand up and tell us no. And so one of the things he did is he got rid of Nashville. And he opened it up to the land and said, the king is looking for a wife. And as he's looking for a wife, thus enters Esther. She was a young woman. She was, uh, she was raised by her cousin, Mordecai. And the Bible said that she was lovely. She was beautiful and had a lovely figure. She was a very beautiful woman. And so Mordecai, she was Jewish, and Mordecai taught her the ways of God, Jehovah God. And he, as he taught her, he uh, said, he heard about this, he said, Esther. He called her Esther, her name was Hadassah, but he called her Esther to fit into the, the culture. And he said, I think this is an opportunity. I want you to go, and I want you to apply to be the wife of the king. And as I was studying this, it really showed a lot about Esther's uh, personality. Here she is. Um, no mother, no father, raised by a cousin, a male cousin. And then she's Jewish, and he, he says, go and apply to be the wife of somebody that's not even Jewish. And by the way, hide your culture. So most likely she may not even see him again. <coughs> but she trusted in his God, and she respected she respected. That's what you don't have a lot with young people today. She respected her parents. She honored and reverenced him, and she went ahead and did that thing. And as she did that thing, she went before. She went before. She was brought before the king. And mind you, King Xerxes had hundreds and hundreds of women brought before him, and as uh, she was brought before him. The Bible said he looked at her. And this reminds you, there were beautiful women everywhere. She was just one of them. But it says the Bible says he looked at her and he had favor on her. Godliness makes a difference. We call that the beauty of holiness. It's not all about how long your skirt is. It's not always about if you got earrings on, you got your earrings on. But it's something that has nothing to do, it's a spiritual, internal uh, look of beauty. It's called the beauty of holiness, and it calls somebody to favor you. I think about when I married my husband, he had a lot of options outside of me. But when um, I saw him, you know, I decided that's a man of God. And I was like, I like Esther, because she went backwards. She could have said, no, I'm shy and frail. And I'm going to stay here and marry a Jewish man. Or she could have said, I don't want him to find me. I'm just going to stay back here. And if it's men, he'll find me. She said, okay. She washed up and presented herself before the king. So he could find her. She was like, here I am. <laughs> Over here on the right. Here I go. And being saved doesn't mean you're backwards. But um, as I presented myself to my husband, made him sure he knew that I was interested, and uh, you know, I was a godly woman. He chose me. We began to be dating, and I just wanted to make it clear we were holy. Amen. Although he chose me, we were saved. I was saved. We were saved. Never one time was there a booty call. <laughs> Never one time did he ever pressure me. Say, you know, I, I want to know what I'm getting into before I get married. Treat me like a sample at Sam's. <laughs> I just had a taste. <laughs> Never one time did he ever ask for a taste of anything. 
in those samples. And when those samples out, <laughs> and God was good. We got married. He chose me. And there's a lot of lies and, and, and holiness. My husband was a virgin. I was a virgin. And I was told by some of my relatives that you need to marry a man that is experienced and you don't know what's going to happen to you on your wedding night. And just lies. I can tell you right away, even though we were virgins, we figured everything out. There's some knowledge that God gives you that just come naturally. Amen. I was born up in church, but I wasn't backward. I wasn't scared. I love my husband. I love this man from the, the song set from the top of my head to the soles of his feet. I love him today. And as we're talking about favor, he looked at her and he saw something that was beautiful and it was called favor. And he had made her his queen. And the, as the story goes on, I'm not going to go through the whole story, but as the story goes on, there was a, the Jewish people, there was a plot against their life, and Mordecai came to Esther and said, I need you to go to the king and plead for the life of Jews. And Esther, this is the part where I believe that Esther, really, the character of Esther is revealed, and she, she had to really think about that. She said, well, do you know that if he hasn't even seen me in 30 days? He, and he, I got, he has to ask me to come before I come. And he said, if I go before him, if he doesn't hold out that golden scepter, I'm going to die. It's the law. You're not supposed to come unless he asks you to come. And Mordecai said, well, don't think if they kill the Jews, it's going to spare you. Somebody else is going to deliver. If you don't deliver us, perhaps you've come to this kingdom for such a time as this. And so she said, fast, three days and three nights. We just went on a three-day, three-night fast. She just fast three days, three nights. And she said, I'm going to go before the king. And if I perish, I perish. So Esther goes a third day before the king. And I love this about this because when she went before the king, she stood in the inner court. He saw her. She waited for his response. And it was so lovely, it's beautiful. So the king, I could just visualize it. He looked at her, he knew he didn't call her, and he held, he holds out the golden scepter. And the Bible said, he just kept holding out. She could have been up, like I said, she could have been backward and she could have told him, well, your great honor, I'm just gonna tell you what I need from out here, I'm gonna yell it, and I don't wanna disturb you, I know you're busy. But when he held that scepter out, how many of you know she went forward? He said, come. And she said, okay. And she walked in. And I love it as it goes forward. It says he held her the golden scepter. This is verse 5, verse, uh, chapter 5, verse 2. And it says that was in his hand. So Esther approached. I love this. It says, and she touched the tip of the scepter. So I can see him holding the scepter out, and she walks right up to it, very bold, because she knew he belonged to her since she found out she had favor. And so she stood and she touched it. He's got it out, and she touched it, and she touched it just long enough for some clicked. And I know that because the Bible said, he said, the next thing he said was, what do you want? I give you anything you want up to one half of my kingdom. Just ask. Me. And we know as the, the scripture goes on that um, Esther just asked him for another day for um, to come to a banquet with him. But the key and and through her, the Lord brought the deliverance of the Jews. But what I wanted to really emphasize this morning was just the coming to the king. And that minute that they touched, the experience, the relationship that was there. Something about love is crazy. I think about, you know, I felt it necessary to tell my children at one point, my daughter, and I tease, 
and I said that it was just important for me to tell her that if anything really happened to you, like somebody was trying to accost you or take you or hurt you, not you know, not like you had a bad day at work and you're mad at your boss, nothing like that. <laughs> but if somebody was really trying to physically hurt you, I said, this is, I want you to know that if I had a gun and it was cool, I would go right up to their head, I would unload every bullet. <laughs> I said, oh, you don't have to clap. I know you are crazy. But I'm not saying you have to grieve. But love's kind of crazy. Everybody's <laughs> like, but love is crazy that way. My love is crazy that way. Because I wanted her to know if anything tried to hurt you, it was going to be good and dead if I had anything. I won't go say, step back, step away, please don't. I was going to walk right up and say, you're not going to shoot, boom, 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 boom. It's going to be on the ground. I'm going to say, oops, after. <laughs> That's how I feel about my children. I feel even stronger about my husband. I would die for anybody in my family. And I'm not a jealous woman. I really am not. And I understand that women have, everybody wants a relationship with their pastor. I want a relationship with the pastor. And you don't need a crazy pastor's wife standing and saying, what y'all doing? How long y'all been talking? Stop kissing her on the cheek. You don't need a crazy, a crazy pastor's wife to do that. And I'm not the one anyway. But if there's something above and beyond that, and somebody went after my husband, I would just, it would just, I don't know. The Lord didn't let it happen. <laughs> that happened because uh, I was like, Lord, you're going to have to call the holy angels. They would have to come down. <laughs> I tell everybody, they're like, such a Sanchez. I said, I'm not the pastor. So don't get twisted. I am not the pastor. I am not, not trying to be the pastor. I'll be like, Lord, you better help me, help me in that day. You're going you to have to have the Holy Ghost come down. I'm going to say, Holy Ghost, look away. <laughs> look away, Holy Ghost. Give me two minutes. Look away. Because <laughs> it's not going to be crazy. But love, love is kind of crazy like that. And as I thought about that, it made me think about our relationship with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. King of kings. And Lord of Lord. And, you know, whether you're a mother or a woman or a single woman, single parent, I just want to encourage you today to know that God is totally in love with you. And he's crazy in love with you. It doesn't matter, you know, there's a lot of things that we love. You know, I love my children, but I can live without them. We want to, but I can't. I love this man, but I can't live without him. The one thing I can't live without is the love of my life. Can't do it. Because there's some knowledge. When he comes into your life, there's some knowledge when he comes in. That, you, that makes such an impression. You can never be the same. You can never go back. Uh, when you have the knowledge, the experience of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And I began to think about the the love of God. And I can hear, I, can, I put a picture in my mind and I saw uh, God being crazy. I said, Lord, where did I get this from? I said, I must get this from you. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought about God and on Adam and Eve and how the devil was crazy. And he came up and he got in the way of a relationship between Adam and Eve. And he broke the relationship between God and them. And I just put it pretty dramatic. I pictured an angel saying, God, what you going to do? The devil got in between you and Adam and Eve and your creation. And God said, well, I'm going to take care of it. He said, what you going to do, God? What you going to do? And he said, you know what? You a spirit. He said, I'm going to make me a man suit. I'm going to put that suit on. He said, well, what you going to do then? What you going to do? And I said, I'm a, you up here in heaven. He said, I'm going to step up through the clouds over 42 generations. And I'm going to come on down there. And I hear the angel say, then what you going to do? Then what you going to do? He said, I'm 
said, I'm going to back it over. He said, I'm going to reverse it. I'm going to turn from man all the way back. I'm going to reduce myself to the very beginning of mankind. I'm going to turn myself into a seed. And she said, what you going to do with that seed? He said, I'm going to place it in the woman. So what you going to do? And God said, I'm going to have the woman birth me out into this world. I'm talking about some kind of love. Well, what's that going to do? He said, well, what I'm going to do when I'm going to get there is I'm going to walk around on that earth for 33 and a half years. And I'm going to experience everything that they experience. I want to know what it feels like to be mankind. I want to know what love is, somebody said. Because I want to feel every hurt. I want to feel every pain. Yet, without sin. Because I'm going to stay there. 33 and a half years. And the angel said, what you gonna do with him? He said, uh, well, well, when he was in his man suit, he named himself, he said, I'm gonna call myself Jesus. Yeah. And what you gonna do with Jesus? He said, well, I'm gonna get up on board the cross because I got a plan with the devil. Yeah. He's got up in my business. Yeah. And he said, I'm gonna get up on that cross he said, and then what? He said, well, then I'm going to change. I'm going to change from becoming a man. He said, I'm going to become a man. He said, I'm going to become the man. And I'm going to be healed for the sins of the world. He said, oh, my goodness. What you going to do then? He said, well, after that, while I'm still hanging on that cross, I'm going to go back into my God deity in my spirit realm. And I got something, I got somebody I want to talk to. I'm going to descend to the lower part of the earth. And I'm going to meet that scandal that you no know good devil. And I'm going to say, booyah. <laughs> Surprise, I'm alive. He's going to go on down there. And he's down to say, what you going to do when you get there, Jesus? He said, I'm going to say, give me back the keys. Give me the keys of death. Give me the keys of hate. Give me the keys of grace. He said, what are you going to do with Jesus? He said, I'm going to take them keys. And I'm going to leave them down there. And I'm going to come back up into my body. They're going to take me off into the cross. He said, and then I'm going to stay there for three days. And then what you gonna do? He said, I'm gonna die for the sins of the world. He said, then I'm gonna get up till it's all finished. And then I'm gonna ascend back to heaven. He said, well, what you gonna do then, Jesus? He said, I'm gonna sit down on the throne and become a king. He said, when I'm a king on 50 days past the day of Pentecost, on the day of Pentecost, he said, I'm going to have all my people together and I'm going to sit down and I'm going to He said, I'm going to hold out a golden scepter. I'm going to hold out a golden scepter. And I'm going to say, whosoever will, come. There's a king that loves you, that would do anything and has done everything for you. It doesn't matter what any man will ever do. He comes and he says, come. And he says, it's, it's not just, I don't want to just be with them. He said, but I want to be in them. And I want them to know me. He said, it's not good enough for them to talk to me. He said, but as the scriptures have said, I want to put my spirit within him. And I want to give them the power that the devil will never touch them again. And they won't ever feel, they might feel lonely sometimes, but they're never alone. He said, I, that way I'm going to be in the inside and I'm going to love them. And it's going to be so overwhelming. That he said, out of your bellies, when I come and flush 
drenching with the Holy Ghost. It's going to be like water drenching you when you get filled with the Holy Ghost. And it's almost like a drowning when you set out of your belly. And it just shall flow rivers. Now we know that we can't contain a river in our human, but that's the best way he can say it. It's so inundated with the Holy Ghost. Huh. He said it's just going to be like rivers, rivers of living water. He said out of your belly shall flow. Hallelujah. Speaking of the Holy Ghost, when he tells that out, and he says, come. And today, I think about Esther, and that's the church of today. And I want to encourage you today that the Spirit says, come. No matter what, the Spirit of God says, come. And we look at Esther, she, she had a lot of baggage. She didn't have a mom. And, and no matter what people say, it makes a difference not having a parent in your life or having a good parent in your life. She didn't have a father. Esther was an orphan. And she was raised by a man, God help her, Mordecai. And then the man said, go up there and be some other man's wife and leave all your heritage and be alone once again. It was no joke what she did. The courage it took for her to stand and come. And so when she touched that, she touched the scepter, she looked right into her future, and she came, and she trusted in that love and made a connection. And I want to tell you today, that love that of Jesus Christ is being extended to you today, and all you have to do is come. The Holy Ghost says come. It's not a one of it's when the spirit is so hungry and nothing else will do. Not your children will do. Not your husband will do. Not your family will do. Not your mother will do. And when you love somebody good enough, you don't even care what anybody else thinks. You will come. You will go. And you will reach out and touch the king. So today, as, as I'm ending, I want to say, in your spirit, don't ever lose that. Take me to the king. Take me to the king. It said, my heart is torn to pieces. And how many of you know there's so many things in my life that don't go the way we want, in relationships that don't go, and sometimes we aren't even the person that we always would have liked to have been. And life has a way of breaking us, just like a glass. And life has a way of tearing us in pieces. And sometimes, most of the times, all we even have to offer God is broken glass and broken pieces of our heart. That's all we can give him. He has all the money, he owns all everything. But all we got is a bunch of broken pieces. And it says, this is just my offering. But you know what? Today, he's extending it to the Holy Ghost. He's extending out the second, and the Spirit says, come. And sometimes, you know what? The most beautiful artwork, many times, is made from broken pieces. The most beautiful pieces are from the things that went all wrong. The mind that was so troubled. The disappointment where we thought we failed God so utterly. And we just give them to him. And he puts something back. Edgy, beautiful, reflective. You see beautiful colors sparkle. And it's you. And he loves you today. So today I want to invite you to come to the king. Don't ever lose your passion as a woman of God for Jesus. He'll do everything for you. Sometimes we can, like I said, we can be disappointed uh, from past relationships, from marital relationships that come. But don't let that reduce you. That has nothing to do with who you are. And the greatest love is yet to come. <laughs> the greatest love isn't me. It, well, it says the greatest love inside of me, but it wasn't me. The love inside of me is Jesus. Inside of me is Jesus. 
And if you can't say that today, I want to invite you here to the altar where the song will play, Take Me to the King. This is my offering. You know, I'm not perfect. If I can tell you one thing I do do well, forgetting those things behind, sometimes it was just yesterday. And I press forward because I'm in love with the man called Jesus. prayer today. You want to be committed. You want to be saved. If you're hungry. If you're tired. If it ain't working. The marriage ain't working. The relationships ain't working. Come to Jesus. Don't care about what nobody says. It's about you and Jesus. Hurt. Abused, empty, got all the world empty, all the scholarships empty, all the friends empty, Mary empty. Come on, there's somebody if you would wipe your eyes, it's holding out to you. Get up. Get up. One touch will change my life. One knowledge. I don't know about you, but I've already been there. And I don't care if the world falls apart around me. I can be reduced to a trailer. One day I know it's going to come to the sea. He's going to rescue me. Even if I'm down on the altar. It's a one birth to one transition. When we're born, we transition into this life. And when we die, I transition into the life in the arms of the loving God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. God. If you're empty, you're empty. If you're hurt, you're hurt. If you're lost, you're lost. Sometimes we just need to get down. Help me. Help me. Help me.
Father and God.
Господи, да было это проявлено. Thank you. 